Good evening and welcome to the Women's Travel Club webinar series where tonight we will look at the Ireland and Scotland and Grand UK tour in September of this year. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Hilberdink. I work for the Women's Travel Club in marketing and creative and now it's my uh, pleasure to say hello to the owner of the Women's Travel Club, Marianne Southall. Hey Marianne. Hello, thank you. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to everybody. Thank you so much for taking time out of your evening to join us for this webinar. I hope that you enjoy it and you learn a little bit about the Women's Travel Club and about our upcoming tours. So I'm really excited to hear about the tour tonight. Um, I know you have been here before. You've led a tour to Ireland and Scotland. I have not been um, sadly and unexplainably to this <laughs> beautiful part of the world. Uh, great feeling on my part. But before we get to that, um, let's do a, a brief and quick overview of the Women's Travel Club and um, what you guys do. Thanks, Kevin. So I just want to quickly go through just a little bit about the Women's Travel Club and how our tours are. Um, I know if you've watched a webinar before, you may have seen this intro, um, but if you haven't, I think it's important to just know a little bit of background about the Women's Travel Club and how all our tours work. So I'll try and do it quickly, um, but definitely if at the end you have any questions, please let us know. We'll open up uh, the microphones and um, also read off any questions you may have typed at the end of the webinar and go through those with you. So uh, the Women's Travel Club's been in existence for about six years officially now. Um, I was a travel agent before I started the Women's Travel Club. I owned, uh, was a part owner in just a regular travel agency. Storefront travel Storefront, agency, right? Yeah. 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 Um, did a lot of all-inclusive type tours, a lot of destination weddings, that type of thing. And... It was it was fine, but it wasn't where my interest really laid. I, I was more interested in tours that would explore and visit different destinations around the world. Um, also, through clients and networking, I knew that there were a lot of women out there that wanted to do these type of tours, but weren't, and the reason they weren't was because they didn't have anybody to go with, mm -hmm. that they, um, either didn't have a significant other or their significant other just didn't um, couldn't travel, didn't want to travel, was working. And they didn't really want to do these tours by themselves. They didn't want to go on a big bus tour with sure. 40 other people on the tour, yeah. a lot of couples, and just kind of feel left out. Well, that's a great point. Also, too, I think if you are traveling as a single or even maybe with a, a friend or, or somebody and you say, okay, I want to go to Ireland or I want to go to Spain. Well, it's an intimidating process to know where to go, where to stay. And I think the tour format makes it pretty simple. Oh, I think so. I think it allows you to do activities and things, see things that you would miss if you were on your own, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I sold my ownership in the travel agency and started working on the Women's Travel Club. Um, on the top picture is Debbie. Debbie is my right hand and everything. Mm -hmm. Debbie's been with me from the start. And um, if you've booked anything with us or done anything with us, a lot of times you have talked to Debbie. Uh, so a few of the key points that I find um, uh, really make us different from other tour companies is uh, one is that the small group tours. So mm -hmm. our tours are limited to 16 ladies per tour. Some even less, depending on logistics, uh, that we might even have less uh, on a tour. But uh, the small group atmosphere lets us do activities that you couldn't do on mm -hmm. a big, huge group, and also lends itself to feeling like you're just traveling with a group of friends. It, it's just very easy. You're not just waiting in line. You get to know everybody. It's it's a fun, really nice way to travel. Uh, our tours are women only. We don't have any co-ed departures. I know some women travel organizations do have co-ed mm -hmm. departures. So you have to kind of look and, and see, oh, is this a co-ed? Is this yeah. a woman only? Ours are 
all 100% women Absolutely. only departures. So do, do not let my voice <laughs> throw you off. Um, I just work a little bit mm -hmm. behind the scenes and uh, and my pleasure to help out with the web webinars, but yeah. Yeah, unfortunately <laughs> we don't let Kevin go on any tours. No. <laughs> um, also, we like to include exclusive, exclusive activities. So these are things that you can't do on a big, huge tour. And also these are activities that really help immerse you in the destination you're visiting. So a lot of times it can be a cooking class of whatever right. type of cuisine they, they eat wherever you're visiting or um, tastings, a lot of, you know, wine tasting, different alcohols, different types of food, different things. So tastings are, are a big one. Um, sometimes it can be physical type of activities yeah. and um, up top you can see yeah, that's this a memorable is, one. you know, like a signature type of activity in a tour, which is the geisha makeover. In, so yeah. uh, in Japan, they took us and they dressed us head to toe as a geisha, makeup, wig, everything, kimono, and then took us out into the street and did a photo shoot, which is great because you get to keep the photos and you have something to remember, the, the this particular activity and the tour by, um, and it's it really is a lot of fun to do things like that. Yeah, I, I would have been up for the geisha experience, <laughs> but no, not for me. Okay, moving along. So you have um, an important part of the tour is the single or double occupancy option. Exactly. So most of the ladies that join our tours join us as a solo traveler, which okay. means that they are coming to the tour uh, by themselves. They mm -hmm. they don't they're not coming with a friend or a relative. They're they're just joining the tour by themselves. So that being said, we do offer the option of a single room or we will match you with a roommate and you can share a room. Um, definitely a lot of this has to do with cost. So when you're sharing a room, you're paying less for your tour because the cost of accommodation throughout the tour you're sharing with someone. If you have your own room throughout the tour, then it's going to be more expensive because you're paying that single price for that accommodation throughout the whole tour. Right. Um, so just which a lot of ladies do choose to do. We, we, the singles always sell out sure. first. So if you're looking at doing a single occupancy book early because mm -hmm. they, they sell out, we only get a limited number per tour and they do sell out. Um, but, on the other hand, if you want to take advantage of the lower rate, we will match you with a roommate. We take a little bit of criteria. Yeah, I was going to say there's something. a process involved, right? You're not just pulling names from a hat and saying that's your roommate. Exactly. So we look at um, sleeping patterns, things like that, age, um, just different things. Sometimes we'll know the ladies that traveled with us on other tours and we'll be like, oh, you know, so-and-so will love so-and-so. And so we'll put them together. Um, but we do look at, at things. And when you fill in the booking form, you're going to see a list of questions sure. about um, your sleeping patterns mostly. Yeah. Uh, these are some of the tour leaders for our various tours. Uh, so Debbie is in the top right hand corner and she does a lot of tours. So if you've traveled with us, you've probably seen Debbie on different tours. Um, beside Debbie is myself. And then in the top corner is Melissa. Below Melissa is Kirsten. Below Kirsten's Irene. Um, there's Linda with the horse and there's Sarah. And so um, on various tours, you get to meet any of these ladies. And if you've traveled this before, you probably know some of these ladies quite well. Okay. All right. Time for the main Time. event. The real reason everyone's joined us. And thanks again for doing so. So we're looking at Ireland from September 8th to 18th, 2019. That will come much quicker than you think. And then Scotland, 18th to the 25th. So let's uh, let's get into the tour. Okay, so um, first off, I want to say these are two separate tours, but they can also be combined to do one grand UK tour, which would then go from September 8th to the 25th. If you do the grand tour, 
Uh, there is an internal flight that is included. So the flight from Dublin to Glasgow would be included in the tour price. And that gives you an opportunity to spend more time in the destination and only have to do one international flight. We do this with a lot of our tours um, mm -hmm. because it gives an option. So right. if, if you're still working and you just can't get away for a long period of time, it gives you the option to do one tour or the other. Or if you can get away for a long period of time and you want to only have to do the one international flight and be away a little longer, it gives you an opportunity mm -hmm. to do both. Ah, so we're gonna start in Ireland and um, have a look at this tour. So we've got various slides that kind of highlight a lot of the activities um, and places that we see in the tour. And um, we'll just go through those and kind of talk about the different areas and, and things that we see. So welcome to beautiful Ireland. Uh, this is the map of Ireland and we'll just have a look at where we go, the different um, cities that we're going to go and kind of the route that we're going to take. So we're going to start in Dublin. From Dublin, we're going to head up to Northern Ireland and uh, visit Belfast. And then we're going to go over to Derry and the Giants Causeway. Down to Donegal down to Galway, then to the Clarny area. And then County Cork. County Cork and Blarney, up to Waterford, and then back to Dublin. So a nice kind of circle <laughs> of the whole island, and also um, starts and leaves from Dublin, which makes your flights very easy. Okay, so welcome to the Emerald Isle. It's stunning landscapes and fascinating, friendly people. Your flight's going to arrive in the morning, and you're going to be met at the airport by your local guide. I have to tell you, they call it the Emerald Isle, and literally, as you're flying over it to land, you can see how green it is. Yeah, it is not an exaggeration. It is the greenest place I've ever seen. It's beautiful. Um, Which means probably bring some rain gear. Uh, yeah, then with all that green comes a little rain. So I did do a little looking into Ireland weather in September. Temperatures are usually highs around 16 degrees Celsius or in the 50s for our American listeners. And they do have 11 days of rainfall on average in uh, Dublin in September. But that could be anything from a downpour to a little shower and could get lucky and not have much at all. Did not. A few years ago, we were there in June, and we it did not rain a single day. Yeah, but clearly you don't. That's unusual. You don't go to the <laughs> UK for what we would call traditional resort weather. So, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Moving along. Okay, so <laughs> on our way to Belfast, we are going to stop for breakfast. Um, we're going to stop at the historic Man of War Irish Pub. It's a truly authentic and historic pub. The Man of War uh, Public House has been on, been recorded in deeds back to 1595. Um, and this is a traditional Irish breakfast uh, pictured here, which consists of sausage, eggs, fries, baked beans, tomatoes, blood pudding, mushrooms, toast. That breakfast is completely in my wheelhouse. Um, but not everyone eats everything. And we certainly have, or you certainly have uh, guests that are vegan, vegetarian. so Or gluten-free. Or gluten-free. Yeah, all yeah. kinds of so dietary restrictions. Um, they can be accommodated. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, before your tour, you're going to get a little questionnaire. And uh, definitely, if you have any dietary restrictions, mention it ahead of time. Or allergies, right? Allergies, right. yeah, for sure. Um, and then we will notify ahead of time and also throughout the tour, make sure everywhere that we have included meals um, remembers and knows about your dietary restrictions. So for sure, um, we can accommodate whatever needs to be accommodated. Um, and then we're going to continue on to Belfast, uh, which is our first major city in Ireland. Not all tours are going to include Nor Northern Ireland in Belfast, but I personally think it's a really important inclusion. Northern Ireland, is, it's full of beautiful sites, has a rich history, 
and it is different than the Republic. When you're there, you mm -hmm. feel the difference. You talk to people, you see the difference, and there is a history, um, not all that pleasant at times to know about, but there is a definite history to learn about, For sure. to know about, and Northern Ireland is fascinating. Yeah, so with most places you travel in the world, they'll have, almost everywhere has a complicated history. So through, I guess, the local guide and, and through the Women's Travel Club guide, the people on this tour will get a, a little, I don't want to use the word taste, but I guess an overview and an understanding of, of the troubles, as they called it, yeah. and the, yeah, some, of the, some of the issues they've had over, over, over decades. Um, these are some of the murals that yeah. you're going to see all throughout Belfast, and they're beautiful. So this is what we're talking about. Yeah, this is yeah. exactly um, a taste of the of, of the history. Yeah, and it's like very political in nature, but very interesting to to wander down Wall Street and and look at them and get a feel um, for what it's like and and where what their thoughts are. So yeah, the the murals are very much a part of Belfast and very much something that I would suggest someone see. Um, while in Belfast, we're going to take in the Titanic Belfast exhibit. It's a fascinating experience. It has nine interactive galleries that will take you through the history and tragedy of the Titanic. Um, I, to tell you, it, it's a fascinating exhibit. Everybody knows about the Titanic. Everybody's seen the movie if you didn't know anything else. And so just seeing all the exhibits is amazing. Um, a little off topic though, if you happen to be a Game of Thrones fan, which I am, if you walk through the parking lot at the back of the Titanic exhibit, you will come to a fence that goes around a big warehouse look build, looking building that big warehouse looking building is the set for <laughs> Game of Thrones. And you can see all the artifacts, which, you know, the Titanic exhibit, totally fascinating. The fact that Game of Thrones set was there for me was like, wow. Nice little side bonus. <laughs> A little side bonus. Yeah, you can see yeah. bits and pieces from, from the show. Um, okay. Yeah, the Titanic Museum would be fascinating. I, I, heard you know on a historical note that the the shipbuilders of um of the titanic in the in the irish town were literally weeping in the streets upon news of the of the ship sinking um just they took it so hard there was so much pride in their workmanship and that they built this ultimate sailing vessel and then when it when it went down on its maiden voyage um, to New York they were just just devastated and what went into building it yeah. was amazing like the rivets and that they all, they put in by hand. Yeah. So you can imagine, yeah, it, it would because it took them so long to build it and was such a masterpiece that they had built. So yeah, exactly. Okay, this is the Giant's Causeway. Uh, it's an area of about 40,000 interlocking basalt columns, and it's a result of ancient volcanic fissure eruption. Um, it's truly an amazing site. This is only just a very small portion of it in this picture. It's huge, and it's like nothing you've ever seen. And to think it's natural, because everything, it, it does look so man-made in the way the columns are. Um, it, it was just such a site and of course this is ireland so there is a legend to how the giant's causeway came to be um it's the legend of finn mccool he was a giant in ireland and there was a larger giant ben o'donner in scotland ben o'donner crosses the sea by the giant's causeway to ireland to fight with finn mccool finn who is knows he's not quite as big as Ben O'Donner, is a little afraid, hides in his house, covered in blankets, and pretends that he's a baby. Finn's wife tells Ben O'Donner that Finn is off hunting. And so when Ben O'Donner sees this baby covered in blankets, he fears that the size, because the, the baby's so large, that Finn must be huge. So he runs back to Scotland. Uh, Finn throws clumps of ground at Ben O'Donner as he retreats, which then becomes the Isle of Man. 
um, both giants in their anger pull up all the middle of the causeway, leaving only the ragged ends at the shore, which is what we see when we see the giant's causeway. That is a much better story than volcanic activity or, <laughs> or whatever the ac actual <laughs> geological phenomenon was that made it. That's a good story. Um, so this afternoon, we're going to go to the historic walled city of Derry. Um, it has a wall all the way around it, and you can walk along the top of the wall. So we're going to have a great walking tour along the top of that wall and learn about the Siege of Derry, the Battle of the Bogside, and Su Bloody Sunday. Uh, Derry is another Northern Ireland city that you can also see the murals in. Okay, then we head back to the Republic of Ireland, and we're in the town of Donegal. We're going to have some free time in Donegal to explore and shop for some local handicrafts. These towns look so beautiful. I can imagine it would be so much fun just to stroll and look and and just be a part of the town for an afternoon oh, or, a, or a day. And the people are lovely. Yeah, They're I bet. so friendly. Um, just to keep in mind, too, um, between Northern Ireland and the Republic, the currencies are different. Oh, true. Yeah, that's... Um, so you're dealing with euros in Northern Ireland? No, you're dealing with pounds. Oh, of course. Pounds, uh, see, I've got it wrong. Yeah. This is good. This is informative. Pounds in Northern <laughs> Ireland yeah. and euros in the Republic. Got it. Okay, then we're going to go on to the Bleak Porcelain Factory. Uh, we'll have a fascinating tour through the, through the factory, and we're going to see how each piece is handcrafted. So all those beautiful porcelain pieces on, on the different pieces of pottery, mm -hmm. they make those by hand. Wow. And the artists, the, the artisans that work in these factories are amazing. And it's just to watch them make every little piece. Yeah, it's just so intricate. Yeah. You know, it makes you not feel bad when the money you spend at the end of the tour <laughs> in the gift shop. <laughs> okay. Then we're going to head on our way to Connemara. We're going to start up at Rothbond Farms. This is one of my favorite stops on the tour. Uh, that might have something to do with the fresh scones and clotted, clotted cream that they serve at the end of the tour. Um, but it's going to be a fascinating look at the Irish farming practices. And if we're very lucky, we might get to feed a baby lamb with a bottle, Aww. which is very cute. That would be very cute. <laughs> Then in Connemara, we're going to visit the Connemara Marble Factory. Connemara Marble is regarded as one of the most authentic Irish products available in Ireland. We're going to learn about the marble and the process from being mined to becoming beautiful jewelry and other items. Of course, we will have time at the end to browse and shop. The jewelry is beautiful. Ladies will love it. Ah. Then there's some free time in Galway this afternoon. While it's steeped in history, the city buzzes with contemporary vibe. Enjoy your afternoon browsing in little shops, having a tea in a cafe or a pint in a pub, or simply just sightseeing. From one amazing sight to yeah. it. Oh, for now. No, sorry. I got ahead of myself. That's okay. Now for one of the most staggering, beautiful sights in the world. Absolutely. The Cliffs of Mohair. For the brave, there are paths to walk along the top of the cliffs. Be ready for some amazing views and dramatic photos. And, and you can see, just it's very tiny at the top of that picture on the left, the path. And yeah. that gives a perspective of how high these cliffs are. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that is amazing is there's no barrier. No, I was going to say, this is not fenced in. This is not no. your uh, uh, a, a safely packaged bubble wrapped uh, amusement park type <laughs> destination. Nope. This is the real thing. And you will be surprised at the people that go to the edge to take pictures. Yeah, <laughs> like, I would be that, that, that would be me, I think. No. I, I think <laughs> we'll have to, we'd have to see in, in actual practice, but yeah, just a stunning uh, picture, incredible. And then wow. from one beautiful site to another, today we'll do the 100 mile Ring of Kerry. Rugged islands, white sand beaches, and dramatic mountain passes. The Ring of Kerry works its magic as you travel from rugged coastline to charming villages and buzzing towns. We will stop along the way for photo ops and village visits. 
And then this evening, we're for a great treat. Uh, we're going to do the Celtic Steps show. It's an evening of Irish song and dance. The show is an absolute must-see while you're in Ireland. You won't be disappointed. The, it's just so well done. Mm -hmm. Okay, time to kiss the Blarney Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you don't want to wait in line to get the gift of the gab, that's what kissing the Blarney Stone is all about. You seeing this beautiful historic castle is well worth the visit. Would uh, help our, our webinar series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the castle is built in 1446. It has a fascinating history, and the gardens are truly beautiful. The gardens around the castle are just lovely, and mm -hmm. you could spend so much time just wandering around the castle. Then it's on to Dungarvan for live music at the Marine Bar. The Marine Bar is a family-run traditional Irish pub renowned far and wide for the best of Irish music. Of course, the Marine Bar itself has a long and interesting history. On a particularly hot summer's day, the Marines reached the top of one slope and their sergeant persuaded a local widow to quench their thirst. Naturally, the thirsty mar Marines drank her dry, giving the sergeant an idea. If the widow was willing to open a she-ben, the sergeant would speak with the local magistrate and get her a license. The cow shed was clean, fresh hay laid and seeding, and a barrel or two of whiskey was rolled in from the secret still in the hills. The marine bar was born. <laughs> it's a great story. Okay, right, and as we work our way back to Dublin, we'll stop at the famous Waterford yeah. Crystal Factory. After a guided tour, we'll spend some time in the retail store, which features the world's largest collection of opulent crystal creations. Some of the crystal was so amazing. It was huge and so intricate in the store. Just walking around the store, seeing the things they had produced was worth like the whole visit mm -hmm. to Waterford. Okay, yeah, then we're going to go on to Dumbrody and we're going to visit the Dumbrody Famine Ship Experience. We'll tour an authentic reproduction of an 1840s emigrant vessel, learn about the Irish famine and the emigration to New York. While a sad and sobering story, you'll learn how these how many of these brave people forged successful lives and you will find notable descendants in the Irish America Hall of Fame. The story of poverty to power rise epitomi epitomized by U.S. President John F. Kennedy. His great-grandfather sailed from New Ross in 1848, and the Kennedy homestead is still nearby at Dungastown. Hmm. It, is, it was another very interesting tour just to learn about the famine and um, the potato yeah. famine, like how important that the potatoes were and um that all the what they went through to try and get to new york well in this day and age i think we're somewhat insulated from the concept of a of a vast societal famine i mean unfortunately we have marginalized people you know or, or homeless people that are struggling with with hunger but to experience famine on a societal wide basis is something I think we have a hard time relating to. And it's it seems so long ago, but in historical terms, it's really not all that long ago. No, exactly. It's, a, it's an amazing story. Okay, and we're back to where it all started. We're back in Dublin. Um, we'll start our day in Dublin with a tour of this icon iconic and world-renowned city. That looks like a lot of fun. Yes, that is the Temple Bar. So does the next slide, actually. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> There's a theme here. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. very Irish. Well, <laughs> just uh, a little Irish fact I came across. The Irish drink the second most capita or per capita um, amount of beer in Europe. Oh. Number one is the Czech Republic, the wow. home of Pilsner. But Ireland is second for beer consumption. Okay. So we're going to continue our Everything Irish tour, and it's time for some whiskey. The Jameson Distillery will teach us what goes into making Irish whiskey, and then it's time to test our taste buds with some a whiskey tasting Very cool. class. Yes, we moved this, actually. It was 
earlier the first time we did so at 10 a.m we were all tasting and drinking whiskey so we thought we should move it a little bit yeah, later in the day yeah that's a good plan is someone myself that that likes whiskey but i wouldn't call myself uh, a real connoisseur it would be interesting to get a little education on the different making uh methods and 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 what defines irish whiskey as as compared to say what we would drink in canada more of a rye based whiskey and then, of course, in Scotland, you have your Scottish whiskey. But it would it, be very fascinating to know what what defines uh, Irish whiskey. It, you know what? It was, and I'm not a whiskey drinker at all. But when you do the tasting, mm -hmm. and they have the different ways of making the whiskey, right. you could taste it. And so as they explained it and you taste it, it was like, oh, I, I get that. I can taste that. Our last evening in Ireland will conclude with a wonderful farewell dinner. It's time to say goodbye to this beautiful country and the amazing new friends we've made along the way. Okay, so now we are on to Scotland and yes, hopefully everyone has decided to come along for both. But we'll understand if you have to call it a, a tour after Ireland and, and head back, but now we're on to Scotland. Yes, and that's the best way to continue and not have to say goodbye, it's just to keep, keep going. going. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. <laughs> so we're on to the vibrant landscape and deeply historical Scotland. The views in this gorgeous destination are unparalleled. It's no wonder with some of the largest wilderness areas left in, the Western, in, left in Western Europe. In this wildlife haven, you can see golden eagles soar above the locks and mountains of Northern Highlands I spot otters tumbling along the shores and watch whales breach off the coast. Scotland is a land with a rich, multi-layered history, a place where every corner of the landscape is steeped in the past, a deserted croft on an island shore, a moor that was once a battlefield, a cave that sheltered Bonnie Prince Charlie. Hundreds of castles from plain but forbidding tower houses to elaborate fortresses testify to the country's often turbulent past. And castles we will see, <laughs> for sure. We have lots of castles in this tour. Okay, so here's our, our map of Scotland, and let's have a look at the route we will take. So we're going to start in Glasgow, and then we're going to head up to Loch Lomond, up the Isle of Skye, over to Inverness and Loch Ness, down to Perthshire, and back to Edinburgh. Now from Edinburgh, you can either fly home from Edinburgh or if you want round trip flight to Glasgow, it's about an hour train ride to get back to Glasgow from Edinburgh. Okay, so our tour is gonna start in the vibrant city of Glasgow. Disarmingly blending sophistication and earthiness, Scotland's biggest city has evolved over the last couple of decades to become one of Britain's most intriguing metropolises. With museums and galleries, nightlife, shopping, and beautiful architecture, it has a bit for everyone. We're going to start with a panoramic city a tour of the city, including a stop at St. Mungo's Cathedral. It's the oldest cathedral on mainland Scotland and is the oldest building in Glasgow. Next, we'll visit one of the other four surviving medieval buildings in Glasgow, Province Lordship. The old house is furnished with a fine selection of 17th century historic furniture and royal portraits. Step back into medieval Glasgow when we visit this fascinating building. This morning, we're going to depart for the Bonnie Banks of Loch Lomond. It is mainland Britain's largest lake and after Loch Ness, the most famous of Scotland's lochs. We will enjoy a relaxing cruise on the loch. Then to our first castle, we're going to visit Bala Castle Country Park. The present castle was built as a residence in 1808 at the order of John Buchanan of Ardock. He was a hat maker and a partner in the ship bank. Although there's not a lot left of the castle, the grounds themselves are quite lovely and beautiful to explore. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to include, continue through the dramatic Glencoe on our way to our hotel. The scenery will astound you. The road through Glencoe takes you through the heart of an ancient volcano. 
It is one of the most beautiful and otherworldly places in Scotland. It's even featured in films such as James Bond's Skyfall and several Harry Potter's movies. Speaking of Harry Potter, this morning we're going to board the steam train, the Jacobite, on our way to the Isle of Skye. This is the train used as the Hogwarts Express in the Harry Potter movies. Be ready for some amazing scenery on this fabulous rail journey. Journey. The scenery in Scotland is mm -hmm. really unmatched. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, some more castles. After a train ride, we'll board a ferry to the Isle of Skye. Once there, we'll visit two more outstanding castles. Armandale Castle and Gardens, the spiritual home of Clan Donald on the magical island of Skye. We'll explore the historic gardens and woodlands, woodland trails around the romantic ruins of the castle. Then on to um, Eileen Donald, which is the one on the left, and it's recognized around the world. It's one of the most iconic images of a, a castle from Scotland, situated on an island at the point where three great locks meet and surrounded by some majestic scenery. It is little wonder that this castle is now one of the most visited and important attractions in the Scottish Highlands. You know, looking at these castles and buildings, it amazes me. Uh, you know, they were built without uh, cranes and, oh, and I know. big, uh, uh, heavy equipment, um, literally stone by stone, brick by brick, and and by masons and carpenters, and it's 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 incredible. And the fact that they're here today and in the shape they are, yeah, um, it's a we just can't really grasp how old they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're on to Inverness, which is going to be your home for the next two evenings. Inverness was probably founded by King David in the 12th century, but thanks to its often violent history, few buildings of real age or historical significance have survived. Much of the older part of the city dates from the period following the completion of the Caledonian Canal in 1822. The broad and shallow river Ness, famed for its salmon fishing, runs along the heart of the city. So we've got some, some ruins here. We've got some ruins, and this is Loch Ness. Ah. I'm sure while we're visiting Newcart Castle, everyone will be watching Loch Ness for a glimpse of the infamous Loch Ness Monster. This castle was repeatedly sacked and rebuilt and sacked and rebuilt over the centuries. In 1692, it was blown up to prevent the Jacobites from using it. It has a huge visitor center, most of which is beneath the ground level, which includes a video theater with a dramatic reveal of the castle at the end of the film and displays of medieval items discovered in the castle. And then we head on to Perthshire via Colden Moor, site of the 1746 Battle of Culloden. The Battle of Culloden was the final confrontation of the Jacobite Rising in 1745. The richly researched, stimulating, and sensitive Culloden Visitor Center, which stands beside the battlefield, features artifacts from both sides of the battle and interactive displays that reveal the background of the conflict. Our next stop is Blair Castle. It is the ancestral home of the Clan Murray and was historically the seat of their chief, the Duke of Athol. However, the Duke of Athol resides in South Africa now. Oh. Um, the castle had has had a diverse history, witnessing both turbulent and peaceful times, enlarged and adapted over the seven over seven hundred years. It's just a beautiful it really castle. Is, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, just gorgeous. Well, we had Irish whiskey in Ireland, and now we're going to have Scotch whiskey in Scotland. Edradour Distillery is the smallest distillery in Scotland and produces Highland single malt whiskey. We're going to learn how they produce this excellent whiskey, and of course, we're going to have a taste of it. Have to have a tasting. Have to have a tasting. And on to another castle. Glamis Castle is set among the beautiful gardens and it's considered one of Scotland's most impressive romantic and reputedly haunted castles. 
The family home of the Earls of Strathmore and Kinghorn, Glamis Castle is a legendary setting for Shakespeare's Macbeth, the childhood home of Her Majesty's Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, and the birthplace of Princess Margaret. I think I know where this is. Yeah, I thought you might. Then we're on to St. Andrews, home of Scotland's oldest university and capital of golf. There will be free time in St. Andrews to stroll the beach, enjoy traditional shops, and have lunch before reaching Edinburgh. And I'm kind of hoping the free time's about four hours. That would be perfect. Yeah, maybe four and a half hours. And uh, <laughs> they do, uh, the old course takes singles every day. You just have to put your name on the board and hopefully you get your name called. No guarantees. <laughs> no guarantees. Okay, and for our final stop on this fabulous tour, we're going to Edinburgh. Edinburgh is one of Europe's most beautiful cities draped across a series of rocky hills overlooking the sea. It's a town intimately entwined with its landscape, with buildings and monuments perched atop crags and overshadowed by cliffs. Enjoy a panoramic city tour of Edinburgh, which features both the new and the old towns. Now for a delight, a pre-opening tour of Edinburgh Castle. Edinburgh Castle is a historic fortress which dominates the skyline of the city of Edinburgh. The castle has played a pivotal role in Scottish history, both as a royal residence, King Malcolm Conmore and Queen Margaret first made their home here in the 11th century, and as a military stronghold. The castle last saw military action in 1745, from then until the 1920s, it served as the British Army's main base in Scotland. Our last night in Scotland, we'll be treated to the Spare of Scotland show. The show involves a rip-roaring evening of traditional Scottish song and dance, accompanied by a great selection of quality Scottish food. It'll be a perfect close to our wonderful time in Scotland. Now it's time to say goodbye to Scotland and the UK and to all the amazing new friends we've made along the way. Let's go over the highlights and inclusions for both tours. So for Ireland, we're going to have transportation throughout by a luxury vehicle, services of an experienced driver guide, 10 nights accommodation, superior first class hotels, 10 full Irish breakfast, five dinners, VIP welcome breakfast at the Man of War pub, lunch at the Marine Bar in Dungarvan, dinner at Michael Dean's Belfast, Giant's Causeway, farewell dinner and entertainment at the Abbey Tavern Howth, admission to Titanic Bel Belfast, Giant's Causeway, Bleak uh, Pottery, Rothbond Farms, Connemara Marble, Cliffs of Mohair Visitor Centre, Blarney Castle, Waterford Crystal, Dumbrody Famine Ship. Guided walking tour of Derry City, Celtic Step Show in Clarny, Jameson Distillery Tour and Tastings, and of course, your Women's Travel Club Tour Leader. Very well done. And I'll give you maybe a little, yeah, <laughs> little I'm break my voice. vocally. <laughs> yeah, so let's look at our highlands and uh, highlights, sorry, and inclusions. Highlands is in my head, <laughs> so from those pictures. Highlights and inclusion, Scotland tour, transportation throughout by a luxury vehicle, services of an experienced driver guide, seven nights accommodation in superior first class hotels, seven full Scottish breakfasts, four evening meals, farewell dinner with entertainment at the Jam House in Edinburgh, panoramic city tours of Glasgow and Edinburgh, cruise on Loch Lomond, Jacobite steam train journey from Fort William to Malik. Malik, thank you very much. Tour and tasting at uh, Edinburgh Distillery, exclusive pre-opening tour of Edinburgh Castle, visits and admissions to Armadale Castle Gardens. What is that? Or your cart? Your cart. You're much better at the pronunciations. <laughs> Castle, Culloden Battlefield Visitor Center, Blair Castle, Glam's Castle. And of course, the services of a women's travel club tour leader. Okay, and so let's just go through the pricing for the two different tours. Uh, the Ireland tour, which is the September 8th to 18th, is going to be for double occupancy, that would be sharing a room, is $4,999 Canadian. 
for our American friends that works out with exchange to approximately $3,800 US, US. For single occupancy, which is your own room throughout the tour, it's going to be $6,139 or about $4,600 US. And deposit is only $300 and final payment will be due on July 2nd. For the Scotland tour, which will be the 18th to the 25th, the double occupancy price is the same at $49.99. Single occupancy is $57.49. Deposit also $300 with final payment to the same day. Uh, if you want to do both tours, so the Grand UK tour, which is going to be then from the 8th to the 25th, you get a little bit of a break on the price. So the double occupancy is $93.99, approximately $7,000 US, and single occupancy will be $11,289, which is about $8,500 US. Deposit is now $600, final payments the same day. Keep in mind the Grand UK tour is going to include that flight that takes you from Dublin to Glasgow to start the tour. Very good. Okay, um, just here's some photo credits for all those beautiful photos we used throughout the presentation. I am now going to open up uh, microphones. So if you have a question, just there's a little thing where you can raise your hand. Just raise your hand and I'll open up your microphone so you can ask your question. If you go I'm down, sorry. I think I saw a question. Oh, okay. Here's Irene. Hi, Irene. Oh, hi there, Marianne. It was good to hear you both. I hope you did you get a drink? Um, of water, yeah, no, it sounded like you might have moved it. Yeah, my voice is getting like less and less as I was going. <laughs> I, I must add, I was impressed by the um, accommodation that I read about on the website. They certainly clearly are superior class accommodations, and Absolutely. I hope your I hope your yeah. listeners can see that. Um, but it looks like a super trip. Um, I'll get off the line so other people can ask questions now, but thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks, Irene. You're okay, bye. Bye. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming up. Oh, Dolly, I do see a question. Hi, Dolly. Good evening, Hi. Dolly. Hi. Hi. I'm just thank wondering. You for attending. Hi, is the, how much is the airfare, let's say, from Toronto? Um, I don't have any airfare quotes right now, and I can't look because the webinar is up on the thing. Um, I would say, depending on seat sales, you're going to look, and depending on where you're coming from, of course, um, mm -hmm. because we'll have ladies from all over North America, uh, that probably between eight hundred to a thousand dollars, depending Canadian, depending yeah. on where you're coming from. That's um, right. So like probably six to eight hundred US. Right. You don't organize the airfare part, right? Um, we can help you with the airfare. It's not part of the tour. Uh, just because we do have ladies coming from everywhere. So we can help organize airfare for you from your specific airport uh, to the destination, but right. it's okay. not included as part of the tour, but we can definitely help you with it. And then um, you would pick us up from the airport, right? Uh, as we land and you would give us the schedule? Yes, exactly. So you'll have the schedule ahead of time. Um, right. But as you land, you're met at the airport. Um, also, very often what happens is um, we'll have ladies from different areas on the same flights. So oh. um, as you're flying, um, wherever you're coming from, we might know other ladies kind of in that area or close that might end up in the same flight. So we'll let you know that too ahead of time. Right. So it'll be hopefully coordinated, right? Yes. And you'll you're definitely met at the airport when you get yeah. there. That's good. And then the airport transfers are included in this, right? 
Yes, they are. Right, okay. And even on the way back to the airport, right? Yes, on the in the store they are, yes. Right, okay. And for any other um, tours, you will let us know if you're going to do another um, uh, another um, preview? Like a the web webinar? Yes. yes. So um, we do a webinar pretty much every Wednesday night on oh. a different tour. So you'll see different ones come up. Um, we um, announce them either a lot of times on Facebook, on our Facebook groups and page, they'll come up or you'll get an email. If you're on the email list, just telling you what webinars are coming up. Okay, this this uh, I really enjoyed this, and it looks well, very well organized. Well, thank you so much. We really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, we like it too. It gives us a chance to kind of reach out and talk. If you, even though we're not, you know, really talking, a chance to to kind of meet the ladies and talk to you. I have one more important question I forgot. Sure, I forgot of one. course. It's a very quick question. That's um, fine. Take your time. Do we get any free days um, within the tour to spend on our own to, to go explore anything that we like or choose to do on our own for a day or half a day? And there is half a day. Within this tour. Schedule? Yes, this tour doesn't have any completely free days. It does have um, a lot of days that have a half a day or a certain amount of time in a certain city. It, it's hard logistically because of all the areas that we're trying to cover in the mm -hmm. tour to have mm -hmm. any real free days. And the other thing is um, accommodation and such uh, mm -hmm. meals are, are a little bit more expensive in mm -hmm. uh, Scotland and Ireland. So mm -hmm. the free days add considerable costs just to have kind of an open day. Oh, so okay. we try and balance that with just kind of half days and such throughout the tour. So that would be like six hours or five, six hours on our own for free time? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. and it just depends kind of which city you're in. Um, if it's a city we're staying in overnight, obviously it's a little bit more time than if it's just somewhere we're visiting for an afternoon and we have to meet back at a certain time. Okay, and your webinars are hosted once a month every Wednesday night or every? No, um, every Wednesday night. Oh, every so, week? Yeah, um, unless of course um, we're unavailable because we're leading a tour or off on a tour, but um, so next Wednesday, the 13th is on Israel. On oh. the 20th, we're doing the Antarctic. On the 27th, we're doing Tahiti. Um, and then they just keep going like that. Yeah, I'm, I really I really appreciate um, all your organization efforts. I think it's uh, really yeah. nicely presented, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks, Dolly. Yeah, really Thanks for your questions. Thank yes, you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Okay, I don't see any other questions. So we'll probably just let you go for the evening. Thank you so much for attending. It really means a lot to us um, to have you attend. If you do have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to email us. You can email us just at info, I-N-F-O, at womens-travel-club.com um, or through the website for sure. Uh, just any, just go on to the womenstravelclub.com website and you can send us an email through there. Um, or, of course, give us a call at 1-844-749-0725. Thank you so much and have a great evening. Thank you, everyone.